So, good evening. Um, I will not have that much time to do a first impression, also known as uh, fail flight. And um, I have like 20 minutes until I have to go to the Ghost Recon Breakpoint launch event. Or have to, or have to, I perfectly choose to go. But uh, So we have a hot viper standing by here. And uh, the first fail I expect is most likely going to be the nose wheel steering. Because I went into the controls and uh, I couldn't actually find a toggle for it. And uh, everything that the manual taught me has absolutely gone to shit. So, uh, there we go. Uh, apparently, joystick button 5 or S. So that should be it. Or not. It could be something else entirely as well, but right now we are heading for absolute disaster here. And uh, absolute disaster meaning rolling off the runway here. Uh, so, I don't really know why uh, the nose wheel steering doesn't really work. Like I said, this is a fail flight. I'm going in fairly blind here. So we're going to just stay still for a moment. And uh, see if we can't fix this in some way. Uh, let's see, that's button 5. And that should be the nose wheel steering. We might actually have to hold it, we'll see. I mean... Depending on the airplane in question... Ah, there we go. That was the problem. So, we didn't actually crash the bird, but what happened was that my rudder settings don't seem to have saved. Also, it's not a... it's a toggle. You don't need to hold the nose wheel steering button. But, uh, Then I know the entire thing was, uh... So we basically, I'm going to uh, have a look on that, the rudder, and yeah, that didn't, uh, that didn't save at all. Yeah, so we are now on the runway, on Area 51, we basically just stormed Area 51, and we made free with a Viper, because that is what you do when you are... Uh, a bit short on time and uh, need to get a viper or as uh, it's properly called the fighting falcon and i say that only to annoy specific people and uh, to me both names are acceptable but there are people who basically feel that pilot jargon means you say viper i have to say the visibility from the cockpit is absolutely astounding I mean, the bubble ho cockpit really comes to its right here. And if you're wondering why I have the gambler's skin on, uh, there ain't any, any else. Let me just tell you that out of the gate. They pushed this airplane so early that they didn't even make any of the skins they advertised that they were gonna make. So, I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Would have been fun to fly a, a uh, F-16 from another country, but I can make do with this. The community is gonna have me covered with skins eventually. So, which way? We'll, we'll pick to the right. And you, you, you have to ap apologize for the fact that I might actually not finish this flight properly. Uh, I need to go in exactly 20 minutes. Rather, I need to stop playing in 20 minutes. All right, we'll ease up on the throttle. I'm being overly cautious here. But uh, the general gist of it is that I don't want to overheat the engine or anything equally silly as... Give me... And by that I mean the stuff you can actually do in the MiG-29, for example. I don't know if you have sufficient experience with the MiG-29, but basically if you go from 0 to 100 on the MiG-29, there's a high chance of engine failure. Either that or my tail is just hitting the... Uh, just hitting the... Um, 
back of the runway while I'm trying it. So, we are officially in the air over Nevada, the Nevada test range, and we have uh, Dreamland or Area 51 right behind us. So far, I have. Ooh, that, that is a nice roll rate. I gotta say, the maneuvering feels a little bit delayed. I'm uh, not sure if this is because I haven't done any joystick settings or anything else, but uh, it feels basically it is. If someone would describe fly by wire to me without me knowing the details, I would say it feels like that. It flies like there's a wire and uh, one at the end of the wire is basically, uh, never mind, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. That said, I don't know where I'm going flying this thing either, but it's just a regular checkout ride here. We are most likely going to fly and touch down at Nellis. Uh, if we can find a way to uh, let's see here, we do have an ace. I don't know what any of these does. I mean, I'm used to the Harrier and the Hornets uh, different radar screens, but this is a little bit different. And to be honest, while I did watch the uh, tutorial videos that Eagle Dynamics uploaded, I did not really pay much attention to what they actually said. So, there you have it. That is me in a nutshell. Just looking at all the fancy visuals. And, uh, well... So, let's see if we can try what is actually not a barrel roll. This is an immobile, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, or ailer. Uh, no, it's not an immobile. I'm being stupid. Uh, basically, I'm trying to have hold three thoughts in the head at the same time. So, first of all, nose a bit up. I know Star Fox calls this a barrel roll, but it's not actually a barrel roll, as far as I remember it. So, we have a couple of mountains down there. A couple of mountains down there. So, we are going to stick on uh, this part of the tent, and we are going to uh, start flying a bit lower. Why? Oh, Bitching Betty has the reinforcement from the screens now. Altitude. Pull up. Sounds a little up. bit different, also. A little more. Pull up. Altitude. A little, little less crisp Altitude. than the Hornets or the Harriers pitching Betty. That sounds a lot more crisp, higher voice, everything. Let's do an Iron Eagle. And by that I mean basically a flight maneuver that serves no purpose but looks kinda cool if you don't know what the hell you're watching. Well, so far, I have to say that the Viper is astoundingly easy to fly. I mean, it's not its not like the Tomcat that you have to fight and wrestle with. It's a far more easygoing aircraft, by far. So, we have the muffler arm on. Uh, the, the bottom is actually simulated, so if they actually have a simulation mode for the weapons. I, I think that's pretty cool. That actually looks more like a radar than anything else to me. I have a bit of the same feeling on the other one. Cockpit looks a little bit too clean, if I may say so. Also, the I don't know why there's fur on the seat, but I suppose that's more of a comfort thing. So, here we have the radio, we have the landing lights. In the manual, all this was basically designated as miscalculaneous paddles and switches. Uh, kind of fun. Uh, also, we can have a closer look on this thing. Uh, that I admit, I have nothing. If you are going by Iron Eagle in terms of what you will expect to find in this cockpit, 
Uh, you'll be sorely disappointed, I'm afraid. Turns out, Iron Eagle is not an accurate representation of the lo flying life of the F-16. At least as far as I know. So my flight time is about... Uh, say... <sighs> yeah, about 13 minutes, so I say we do like this. If I can't get the weapons online, uh, then what I will do is simply take a turn around Las Vegas and touch down at Nellis. And then we'll have... Here we... Yeah, this definitely looks like a radar screen. There we go. Weapon, weapon placeholder. That looks like a weapon selection screen to me. And that looks like alterations on the HUD in ration for said weapons. I'm not actually sure. Oh, I accidentally managed to trim the aircraft there. We shan't do that. Altitude. Altitude. Just because I'm over a city doesn't mean you have to bitch about the altitude. Yeah, there, there's something off about the maneuvering that is feels a little bit delayed. And I can't really describe the feeling. It's like everything I do is just a third of a second too late. While most other aircrafts are very intuitive, this one is this one is like I said easy to fly, but it's also a little bit different in that regard. I I, I mean I can't explain it. It's very difficult for me to try and uh, explain the phenomena of flying this thing, but it doesn't really notice as much in the hard maneuvers, such as the, this, this, or this. I mean, the harder the maneuver, the more, more responsive the airplane feels, but when it comes to the... Uh, more regular, slower maneuvers. It's almost like the there's an inhibitor of some sort. Okay, so that is still a weapon placeholder. There's a lot of placeholders in this. VPN placeholder. I mean, this is really early access. Lots, a lot of the systems doesn't even seem to be in this yet. But, so, let's see if there's an air brake on this thing. Yep, there we have it. So what are the odds that you think I'm gonna be able... <laughs> yeah, most likely. Like I said, I skipped most of the uh, manual here. Uh, so th thank you for uh, reminding me, but I don't even really know how much flight time I got left. Not in terms of fuel, but I have like nine minutes left. So we are gonna close the air brakes, slow down sufficiently. I'm gonna see if I can find the buttons we were talking about. But this is a fail flight, so if I don't actually make it, I'll just be right as rain with that too. Oh, there they are. They are right, lit they are literally in the heads up display. Right in front of me. I mean, how the hell did I miss them? Just ridiculous at this point. So the IFF is not working as far as I know, meaning that Georgia at War will most likely have a lot of uh, blue on blues in the near future. So 
we are going to uh, fly a little bit faster here, so we don't actually crash on takeoff. That actually happened with the uh, Palmcat when I was flying that one. I got... no. I fully admit I did not see those buttons. Uh, like I said, when I'm watching Eagle Dynamic videos, it's basically just... Oh, look! Trading airplanes and nothing else. It takes a lot of repetition for me to actually get something done when it comes to uh, learning how to fly. So, I'm going to go around, because if there's something I've learned from my mistakes, is that I'm usually far too eager to land. And uh, that usually lends itself to bad landings. Now, if I fly the Hornet, the Hornet can usually compensate for my piss poor landings by having extraordinary landing gear. But, uh, no. I'm not going to uh, count on the landing gear of the Viper being at all sufficient for my lack of landing skills. Now, you can ask just about anyone. My landing skills are not sufficient in the least. So, like, like I said, I am running on a very limited schedule here. I thought that I just wanted to get some flying time done in the Viper. But in like six minutes, I have to get going to a launch event for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And uh, it's going to be fun, really. But uh, when I heard that the Viper was going to be released today, I was like, I hope it's the same release time as the F-14. Because the F-14 was released like three in the afternoon. I had just gotten home from work. And... Um, Sadly, Altitude. Altitude. I have the gears down, Bitching Betty. You don't actually need to remind me about the altitude. Uh, Bitching Betty, if no one has told you this, the entire point of landing is reducing altitude. So, let's see if this is going to work for me or not. I am betting on horrible, horrible crash, because to this day... I have never landed an aircraft on my first attempt. Harrier went down in flames. Mirage, end of the runway, flame wreck. Um, Hornet hit a palm tree landing. That's one That's one on video, too. Uh, Vigan broke a landing gear. Let's see. MiG-21. I have never, ever in the world managed to land the MiG-21. I'm dead serious about that. I have managed to land the uh, one of the helicopters, the one I fly, the Huey, or the Eroclis, depending on who you're talking to. Uh, this is not going to end well. I just have this sense that I'm approaching my doom. Hopefully, I'm reading all this hard terminology correctly, and that means I will touch down gently at the end of the runway. Uh, but uh, if I'm very, very... Altitude. Altitude. Look at that. Altitude. 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 Yeah, Altitude. I know what I've forgotten, Altitude. and, uh, Altitude. I don't seem to be able to get the br <laughs> Oh, it, it was going Altitude. so well! It was going Altitude. so well! Let's kill those brakes. Thank you. I might need the... Yeah, I know I, I didn't pop the brake chute. I know I didn't do that. So that was basically the big fail of that landing. But everything else actually went rather okay. At least, I mean, we didn't crash. We managed to touch the airstrip. And I have three minutes. Three minutes to get this thing on the ground. Otherwise, I'm just going to crash it into the Trump Tower. In fact, I think crashing it into the Trump Tower is going to be... Quicker and easier for everyone involved, but 
I'm just going to dive into the controls here. There, okay, so there ain't a break shoot. I was apparently wrong about that. Wouldn't it be? F I mean, I was kind of convinced I've seen the F-16 with a break shoot, but obviously I was wrong about that. Okay, so if uh, there ain't no break shoot, then the landing was too too fast. Nothing but too fast. So now we are going to do a far more improvised landing. In fact, do we have... Yeah, we, we do have other airstrips around. We have McCarran, but McCarran's long runway is not on our, our most viable approach. So we're going to try this again. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I'll have to go. Altitude. I mean, that Altitude. really annoys me, and I don't mean that, it, 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 basically, I, it's a common mistake I did. I assumed something, and that assumption led to a maneuver not being executed the way that it should be. I think we are actually going to come in at a far too fast landing again here. This is gonna be a far too fast landing. Uh, but I'm gonna see if I can't force this by basically just pushing the brakes. Altitude. Altitude. Yeah, this is not going to work. Let's just do this. Altitude. Altitude. Well, we survived that, and I did not have any intention of doing so. However, sadly, people, I need to leave. Uh, I need to leave for the launch event, so uh, I'm going to see if uh, how much we can pull Altitude. on Altitude. the maneuvers close to the ground. And if I don't crash, Altitude. I'm simply going to Altitude. quit the game while I am at Head, we have one minute. One minute until I need to just grab my 511 backpack and rush out the door. Pull up. Altitude. Altitude. I mean, it's a very forgiving aircraft to fly, I'll grant it that. Alright, pull up. And with that little maneuver, we'll have to do as Bitching Betty says, and I need to go. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, and I'll see you guys probably sometime tomorrow, but I'll need to rush now. See you later.